It's been two crazy years, both 2021 and 2022 so far. So many horrible things happened to the world, and at the same time, it felt like time didn't pass at all. Over here in NUS though, I have completed the first year of my electronics engineering degree. That was a mistake. It's supposed to be electrical engineering. Electrical and electronics engineering is offered in NTU. I get that mixed up a lot, don't I? So, before I return all the knowledge I've learned so far, I felt that maybe I should go into detail all the modules, give my opinions on them, and perhaps rate them. This could double up as a video on what EE freshmen can expect. I know all the Chongswa people out there who has been conditioned to mark for all their lives are desperately asking, oh, what should I study for, what should I study for? And I hope I can give you all some tips. But seriously, you guys should really just enjoy this little break that you have. For Singaporean guys, have fun for your two-year vacay. You can just start studying in the last three, four months. If you have been mugging for the past 12 or so years and you are heading off to grind for yet another four more, then I think this will be the only pit stop and you wouldn't want to miss it. Now without further ado, let's start off with semester one. I've taken seven modules for a total of 22 modular credits or MCs, three of which are mini modules that only last for half a semester and they provide two MCs each. We shall begin with EE1111A Electrical Engineering Principles 1. This is an elementary course teaching you the fundamental principles of electrical engineering and DC electricity. Starting off, you'll learn about laboratory and electrical safety, functional block diagrams, approximation and rounding off. In the first six weeks, you'll be introduced to electrical components such as DC power supplies, resistors, voltmeters and ammeters, and principles like Ohm's law, current divider rule, Kirchhoff's current and voltage laws, superposition, and Thevenin equivalence to know how electrical components work on a circuit diagram level. In the next four weeks, you'll learn how electrical systems work from a bird's eye perspective with things like power ratings, efficiencies, losses, load curves, and reasons for failure. Battery specifications such as capacity, internal resistance, voltage ratings, and C ratings will be explored. More electrical components will be introduced such as photovoltaic cells, capacitors, and inductors. These will be put together to form resistor capacitor inductor circuits or RCL circuits, which will introduce us to yet more concepts such as oscillation, damping, frequencies, resonance, and most importantly, ordinary differential equations. This term will be appearing quite often from here on out. Basic thermodynamics and mechanical stress are also taught. Lessons will be divided into lectures where all the concepts are covered and lab sessions where you can get hands-on and use equipment such as DC power supplies, oscilloscopes, function generators, and multimeters. In terms of assessments for this module, it comes in four flavors. First off, there are weekly worksheets for both theoretical and lab-based work and you'll have to submit your lab data measurements, circuit diagrams, graphs, excel tables, answers, and whatnot in the form of a word document or an e-log book as they like to call it. Pretty straightforward, just do and submit it every week. Of course, there are quizzes for midterms and finals, and when I was taking the module, both of these happened to be on weekends before their respective recess weeks. Now, recess week is a week where there's no lessons whatsoever, and you're supposed to do your own studying. Many of our students rely on this in order to really catch up on their studies, and EE111A has their exams before them. So... I don't really understand what's going on and I really wish that, you know, they would actually time their exams after recess week. Hopefully this changes, but I don't know, you're warned. There is a personal research topic that will be given to students and you'll have a two-week window to do your own research before presenting it to the rest of the class. The topic could range from comparing the differences between electrical components made from different materials to discussing the technical requirements to automating a train. There is then a one-week period where you have to produce a research report for submission. This is genuinely quite fun, and researching my own topic and hearing topics from other people was a interesting and eye-opening experience. Lastly, there is a group project where using the knowledge taught, you have to come up with a system for a delivery quadcopter or an autonomous vehicle or whatever the stuff fancy for the batch. You have to include specific models on whatever components used, their calculations and reasons for choosing them, and also produce a bill of materials for your group project report document. By the way, there's a group presentation. Our professor for this batch's grouping was Prof Chua. She tries to encourage class engagement and discussion and made learning the module much more bearable. 
Overall, it's an okay module. For those who learned about electricity in poly or in JC physics, this should be rather simple and is a good revision or refresher course. Moving on to CS1010E Programming Methodology. This is a basic programming course for all engineering freshmen. As a variant of the computer science module CS1010, this is run in Python instead of other programming languages like Java or C++. You'll learn the basics of programming such as variable types, if-else statements, range, for and while loops, recursions, functions, higher order functions, list manipulation, multi-dimensional arrays, searching and sorting, file manipulation, object-oriented programming, a bit of data visualization, a bit of image processing, a bit of pathfinding, and the importance of time and space. Trust me, this is just basic knowledge. There are bi-weekly assignments that you have to complete on cosmology, which you might have heard of before somewhere. But if you think that there are things like storylines, gamification, achievements and levels, there aren't any of them here. This is a variant for engineering, which is more practical. All you'll get is a text editor and a code runner. If you really wanted all the fancy stuff, you should have joined computing, but that shouldn't be the main reason. I heard that it's quite depressing over there. You also have midterms and finals, and these are much easier than the variants for science students CS1010S and the main module CS1010. I heard that for science and CS students, they'll have to actually write out functions and working code, while engineering students can just sit back, read a few lines of code, and figure out what it does. Of course, we'll still have to implement working code in test conditions while doing practical exams. There's one for midterms and one for finals. You have 2-3 to three hours to write some working code for 3 different scenarios, the first most likely wanting you to implement code in both iterative and recursive form, while the other two questions would likely expand on what you've already done in cosmology. Prof Chung was able to explain all the concepts clearly in an entertaining way, and Prof Adi did an amazing job moderating the chat and answering all the questions from us. There was a cheating case around the start of the pandemic that brought this module onto the news, so I would like to inform you all that all the assignments and test submissions are run through a plagiarism checker which has a repository of all the solutions from previous batches of students and also common code snippets from GitHub and Stack Overflow. For this module, come up with a solution on your own and don't copy anything from GitHub and Stack Overflow. This module is more to train your analytical abilities rather than a internet searching course. Some people struggle with this. I personally found it was okay, but if you think that you might have difficulties, then my advice would be to read up a bit about Python and play around with it on Visual Studio Code. This should help you understand the first few weeks of concepts while you are getting up to speed with studying in uni. Another module that you will need to really get up to speed quickly is MA1511 Engineering Calculus. <sighs> this is gonna be a doozy. This mini module is conducted in the first six weeks of uni and the mental whiplash that you get from transitioning from holiday mood to studying this module is absolutely obscene. It tries to cram in what is likely 6 months of pure calculus into around 6 weeks. You have to learn about partial derivatives, maxima, minima, settle points, Lagrange multipliers, double integrals to find 3D volumes, integration in polar coordinates, vector value functions, integrations to find arc length, line integrals, Green's theorem, curl and divergence, limits, and geometric and power series. Even the professor, Prof Tuan Seng Chu, admits that it's very difficult to adapt to, which is why very much needed help in explaining other topics is provided in the form of Math Educational Video, which can be found in the multimedia tab for the module in Luminous. There are tutorials every week for each chapter and they test your knowledge very extensively. You don't need to submit them and your teaching assistants won't chase you to finish it, but it will be immensely helpful in understanding the concepts. Other than that, there is a quiz on each chapter and they are timed. You have two attempts each, which we kind of exploited to get the questions in the first attempt and then slowly work them out to get a higher score on the second try. There are also a couple more practice tests for our batch to help us out in getting used to online evaluation settings, but I'm not sure if they'll be a thing when it's fully in person. Maybe they'll still be available, but it's just to get used to um, in-person test settings. For my finals, there were 10 questions, 2 questions for each chapter, and all of these had to be done in 2 hours, which honestly isn't a lot of time. You have to write it down physically with pen and paper, then scan and upload the documents onto Luminous. I don't know what's going to be the case for your in-person examinations for the next batch onwards, but that will be something for us to experience together. My tip for this module is to reread the notes given, replay all the videos, and re-watch the lectures again and again and again, 
until you completely understand all the concepts. Because there's not enough time in the finals for you to frantically search through the notes when you are stuck at a question. Conducted by the same professor is the system module MA1512, Differential Equations for Engineering. This mini module starts right after finishing MA1511 and is conducted in the next 6 weeks of the semester. Thankfully, this is a much better paced module than MA1511 and more focus is placed onto the application of the concepts being taught, which are linear first and second order ordinary differential equations. For first order ODEs, you'll learn more about separable and Bernoulli equations with the examples of radioactive decay, cooling, and mixing. For second order ODEs, you'll learn more about homogeneous and non homogeneous linear ODEs, cases where it is in polynomial, exponential, sine, and cosine forms and how to solve them using two different ways, which are the methods of undetermined coefficients and the variation of parameters. From there, more use cases for the ODEs will be explored such as oscillations, population modeling, heat equation, and methods of manipulation such as Laplace transforms, TNS shifting, and derivatives. Partial differential equations and separable variables will also be covered. There are portions that are not taught in the lectures, such as how to use MATLAB, which is a very powerful piece of computing software, but that is not required to solve any of the problems in these two modules. Its use will come much later in semester 2. My tip is to just keep practicing and getting used to the examples so that you'll be able to fare well for this module. Another module that you'll need constant practice, or maybe not, is PC1201, Fundamentals of Physics. This is a bridging module between O-levels and university-level physics, and I had to take this because I was a dumbass in junior college and I dropped my H2 physics to H1. It covers JC-level physics, which can be divided into physical systems and electromagnetism. For the physical side, topics such as kinematics, vectors, projectile motion, circular motion, centripetal acceleration, relative velocities, forces, friction, energy, work done in a system, conservative systems, Linear momentum, collisions, oscillations, damping, and simple harmonic motions are covered. As for electromagnetism, electric field and potential, current resistance, DC circuits, magnetic fields and their sources, and electromagnetic induction are taught. If you feel like that's a lot, well, yes, it is. This is about two years worth of JC level physics that's being taught to you in 12 weeks. This felt like revision to me because I've learned everything in JC, and the electricity portion is being taught and further expanded upon in EE1111A. In terms of assessments for this module, there are two graded assignments that have a 2-3 to three week window to finish and submit, two mock tests, and a midterm and final quiz that will cover only the topics that are taught in the respective half semesters. Prof Day who teaches this module is a very nice person, and you might see him around in PGPR since he is a warden there. One thing though is that he likes to go on tangents during lectures, so you might need to do your own reading to get through all of the syllabus. Moving on to EG1311, Design and Make. This module requires students to work together as a team to build a vehicle that could traverse an obstacle filled track. Our batch had an added requirement of throwing a ball over a wall at the end of the track. The vehicle will have to be built using the provided materials of an Arduino Uno, some motors, some servos, and other materials like cardboard, ice cream sticks, and a small rubbery mat, among others. You'll also be provided a small acrylic board to laser cut some parts of your choice during lab sessions that occur every two weeks. The module is graded by the performance of your vehicle based on a checklist, and there is a bonus mark for having the lightest vehicle amongst all of the vehicles that checks out all the points. Groups will also have to make a short video presenting the design process, the trial runs, and the actual performance. Some groups may take this chance to, you know, have some fun in making the video, which was the case with one of my groups in my lab session that made a video chock full of memes. The professor was stupefied and the look on his face was amazing. This module requires you to meet up with people outside of the lab sessions to be able to build and test the vehicle, so spare some time in your schedule for that. Also, this module is for CDE students, so you might find some people from architecture course in your group. They have a lot on their plates already, and their course demands are like sky high, so don't expect them to put in much effort on this. Finally, we have CFG1002, Career Catalyst. This is an extra mini module that is offered by the NUS Center for Future Ready Graduates, or CFG. This module offers guide videos on tips for interviews, elevator pitches, speeches, CV writing, resume writing, and LinkedIn profiles, among other topics. 
or to allow students to level up their internship or job seeking game. The six weekly assignments are more of a step-by-step -step tutorial that will make you more presentable to companies looking for hires. CFG also offers those in their senior years some other mini-modules that are specialized towards goals like getting an internship, improving communication skills, or writing better CVs. Honestly, this is just two free MCs, but for people who want to maximize all of their time in NUS and get things like a double degree, a major minor, or some extra specializations, this module may as well be skipped. Hell, they might not even be here. All of those things are very content heavy and they probably wouldn't have the time to watch some random guy on the internet rambling. For the rest of us who want to sign up for this module, you'll have to sign up using a different process. It's not through your regular module registration, I don't know why, but yeah. I'll put the link in the description below for you to check it out. If you watched all the way to this point, thank you so much for sticking around. If that was too long and you skipped to this part, welcome. TLDW, if you want to be ready for year 1 semester 1 of NUS Electrical Engineering, then you'll want to learn a bit about Python programming to make life easier for you. Also, do brush up on your differentiation and integration and mentally prepare yourself for some fast-paced learning cause MA1511 is going to hit you like a semi-truck. That's all for year 1 semester 1, that was a very long video so I'm going to be breaking this up into two portions and uploading my detailed explanation for year 1 semester 2 in a separate video that will be coming up soon. Do give a like if you found this helpful and subscribe to make sure that you don't miss out on the second part. It's Kai and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.